Hello there and welcome to this Estranti bite-sized video. What you see in front of you right now is an extract from our F3 topic on forecasting and sensitivity. Now this topic comes up in various forms. You see it in F1 where you have to deal with cash budgeting and cash flow forecasting. You see elements of needing to understand what sensitivity analysis is and how it can affect the business in P2. And so what you see now at F3 is a more strategic look at forecasting and sensitivity and the importance of it, which of course is an important topic to not also learn for the F3 exam, but also for your strategic case study exam as well. So without further ado, let's now take a look at forecasting and sensitivity analysis. Now, I don't know who among you are football fans, but I'm sure you're all aware of the team Manchester United. Now... They had a manager, Alex Ferguson, who managed them to great success for over 20 years. But eventually, he had to retire, which is good news for the rest of us football fans. And in 2014, a Dutchman called Louis van Gaal took charge of them. And at that time, Manchester United, as a company, undertook a monumental change in their financial strategy. Because what they'd been doing previously, to a certain extent... now. Other football fans may disagree with this statement. They'd been developing players. So they'd either develop young players or purchase cheaper players and then develop them into better players and greater assets. However, with the change of manager in 2014, Manchester United's financial strategy changed. So what they decided to do was buy established players. Now, they bought these established players for £250 million. Now, they expected to offset this purchase by winning trophies, qualifying for lucrative tournaments, and so they'd get all the money back from what they'd win by buying these established players who were going to win them these trophies. But unfortunately for the club model, unfortunately for Manchester United fans, but quite good for other football fans, this didn't happen. And in 2015, so it had been the start of the season 2014, they finished fifth in the table, which is outside the really lucrative Champions League places. OK, so we know that football, to a degree, relies on luck. There could be injuries to key players. There could be poor refereeing decisions. But that's not to say that other businesses aren't subject to luck. And in fact... Businesses have to analyse how successful their strategy is going to be on future performance and the future position of the entity. And they need to do that because then an entity is able to prepare itself for any surprises in the future. Let's say, for example, that forecasting shows actually the entity is going to need additional future requirement to offset a negative cash balance. Well, by forecasting, the entity has prepared itself for that. It can take action so it's not surprised by it. It means that shareholders' expectations can be set, for example, with regards to dividend payments. So we don't have to polish our crystal balls. We can put our tarot cards back on the shelf because accountants don't need this to see into the future. All we need is careful planning to make reasonable assessments of the future financial and cash flow positions of an entity to help their funding needs. So let's have a look now. Let's move on down to forecasting financial statements. And all this really is, is taking one set of statements. So maybe the first quarter and then looking at the changes and assumptions that are made for the forthcoming year, the year ahead, adjust those balances of the actual statements, and then that will allow us to produce a forecast set of financial statements. And it's a simple process to do this. It's just a step-by-step -step work through, considering how the balances are gonna change on the financial statements. So let's put up some of these financial statements. Well, firstly, we've got a statement of comprehensive income. Then we've got a statement of financial position and a cash flow statement. But it's the first two statements that we're going to do a walkthrough of in the next section. So let's drop down and we're going to see how we can enable 
the forecasting that we've talked about in the first section by using two sets of financial statements. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more like this, including marks, revision notes, and even question tutorials, you can head on over to the Astrantia website where we offer a full course that gives you access to this wide variety of materials, all in order for you to help pass your exam. And if you'd like to stay in contact with us and see more posts like this, you can also subscribe to our social media channels, including Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter.